In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your reference images for 3D modeling in Maya. So I'm in Photoshop right now. The first thing I want to do is crop my image so that I'm, uh, I don't have as much information. So I'm going to go to my rectangular marquee and select about there. I don't need to see this guy and I don't need this guy that much. I don't need this paragraph for my modeling. So I'm going to save image crop and it's still not quite square. So I want the the X value to be the same as the Y value. So to do that, I go to image, canvas size, and you can see the width is uh, 3,853 pixels. I'm gonna copy that value into the height. I paste it there with control V, and then I, I'm gonna leave the anchor in the middle, and that's gonna create white space above and below. So I say, okay, and if I re, size this to fit my screen, you can see that it's now square with white above and below. So the last thing I'll do in Photoshop is to save it. I'll go to File, Save Scene As, and I'm gonna save it on my computer. So the important thing is that you're putting this, one of the important things is to put this in the correct folder so you know, so Maya will always be able to find it when you need it. So. I already have a folder called thesis. So this is my thesis character. So I'm gonna put it under documents, Maya, projects, and then thesis. And any image that you're bringing into Maya as a reference or as a texture, you're gonna put it under source images. And I'm gonna change this to a, should come up as a JPEG. Oh, you know what? I need to, before I can save that, I need to remove any extraneous layers. That way it will save it as a, as a JPEG. So now that there's only one layer, now I can save it as a JPEG. So file, save scene as, and then on my computer. Yeah, you can see it's creating it as a JPEG. And I've already created this image, but um, so I'm not going to resave it, but I wanted to make sure to mention to you that you don't want to destroy your original model sheet that, especially if you've done a, a good job in, in laying it out, um, that's something that you'll want to add to your, your, um, portfolio. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to label this as model sheet. In fact, I can even cut this name down. Maybe I'll just call it MS. He who is my character's name, underscore MS for model sheet, underscore SQ for square, which means that I've, I've squared it up. And I would say save. There's already one in here. Um, so that's all we need to do in, in uh, Photoshop. Now in Maya, let me, back this up. So in Maya, if you haven't already done this, you want to make sure to create a um, project window. And then current projects, since this is your character design, I would call this maybe character folder. And this is the folder that um, you're going to want to put your um, any of your images in, including your your reference image from your model sheet. So I already have uh, my thesis project, so I'm not gonna use this, but um, the next thing is to create a polygon primitive plane. So under create polygon primitives plane. And I'm gonna scale this to 24 by 24 by 24. So it's the size of the grid. And as soon as you create an object, you need to reassign its texture, or its, I'm sorry, its shader. So if we go to the attribute editor, you can see that this image plane is a Lambert 
is on Lambert one. And if, if we were to just immediately assign my um, anything to Lambert one, that means anything else that we bring in as a model, any geometry is gonna have that new shader on it because it's Lambert one. So we want to immediately change the shader. We don't wanna keep this as uh, Lambert one. So again, I'm gonna scale this up to 24 and I'm gonna right click and hold. I'm gonna go to assign new material. I'm gonna go to Lambert. And now you can see that it's Lambert two. So as long as it doesn't say Lambert one, you're good. So with this as Lambert two, instead of Lambert one, I'm gonna call this Kihu MS for um, model sheet underscore SHDR, all caps for shader. I'm gonna hit enter. Now I'm gonna go into the color swatch and find my file. And then I go to the image name and I wanna check just to make sure that it's in the correct folder projects or Maya projects thesis source images. So for you all, it might be Maya projects character source images. And then I'm gonna look under it's alphabetical. So here's my um, Hihu MS SQ. And then I'm gonna say open. And if it doesn't appear, very often what happens is it looks like this when you, after you've applied it. And the reason it's gray is because it's in shader mode. So that's number five on your keyboard. If you hit number six on your keyboard, it should show up as a texture. So the next thing I'll do is rotate my plane 90 degrees. So I hit E on my keyboard and I rotate in the x-axis, you can see that's rotate x. I'm gonna just rotate that 90 degrees. And I'm actually gonna to go to the front view for a second. And I'm gonna realign it so that the character is, is um, the middle of the character is the middle of the, um, the image. So I'm gonna hold down the letter. First, I, I hit W. And I don't know if you can see this very well. If I hit four, you can see through it. So I hit W and you can see the, the move tools, the move handles, six to see the, my image again. I'm gonna hold uh, just D by itself and drag down to about where his feet are, that, that guideline that I have. And then I'm gonna hold down, I'm still holding down D. I'm gonna drag in the X so that's right in the middle. In fact, I can hold down D and V as in Victor and it'll snap to the vertex that's right in the middle of his feet there. So with that repositioned, I'm gonna hold down the letter X by itself and then drag with my left mouse button until it snaps to the point of origin, zero, zero, zero. So I've relocated my, my grid. Also, you can see that I don't need this information. This is just, these are just blank. Um, faces down here. Some of them do have a little bit of his information on the feet. So before I delete any extraneous uh, squares that I don't need, I'm gonna adjust the position a little bit so that I get um, all of the images inside the squares that I need them. So to do that, I'm gonna go to panels, layouts, two panes side by side. So I'm gonna keep this as my front view. And then this other panel, I'm gonna switch that from um, panels, go down to panel again, and then at the very bottom, UV editor. And you can see the image that, we, that has been brought in, but I'm gonna use UVs. I'm gonna right click and hold and go to UVs. I select my UVs, make a marquee around the entire image. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer in here to make sure that the feet go above that line. So in my UV editor, I click and drag all those UVs. Actually, I have to drag down so that they go up. It's kind of counterintuitive. Okay, there his feet are right on the line. So I'm gonna move around and make sure that the rest of the model is within my squares that I want them to be in. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of these squares up here. You don't, you're not required to have a top view. I just did this just because I had everything else already done. Um, 
So that looks pretty good. So I'm, I don't need this view anymore. So I'm just going to tap the space bar. So I'm focused on my front view. Now I'm going to right click and hold and go to um, face mode. And I'm going to make a drag a marquee at the bottom. And you can see that it selected all the faces at the bottom that I don't need. And the important thing is that it's not selecting my image. I, it's selecting a little bit of his leg down here, but I don't need that information. So I'm going to delete those faces. Then above, I can grab these top faces. And I just, again, I just did a marquee around those faces and delete those. And right here, you can see, I don't really need this to say side view. Um, so I, I can delete these four squares and I, I guess I could delete these two. Uh, there's no information in there that I need for the model, so I can delete those as well. Um, I could delete these four faces because this is the, actually the back view. Um, and I don't need these uh, drawings of his face either. So that's pretty good. That has all the information that I need to model from. So I'm going to go to object mode, I'm going to hold down um, the space bar, then hold down left click on Maya so I can go to the perspective view. And I'm going to select these faces that make up the side view. Oops, sorry, not uh, object mode, I need face mode. So I select these faces. Now I'm going to go up to edit mesh and I'm going to say extract. And you can see when I did that, after, extraction will separate those selected um, faces or that, that new object from the rest of the geometry. I'm gonna do that again with the top. So go to face mode, make a marquee selection around this top view, edit mesh, extract. So I have one, two, three. I'm gonna do that again twice so I can separate the front from the back. So I'm gonna make a marquee selection around the back, edit mesh, Extract. So now I have four images. One, two, three, four. Um, but it, I don't know if it's real obvious, but I when I cut this, I didn't do a very good job cutting it with uh, in before I as I was um, the original drawing. So I'm actually going to change this a little bit. Um, and you, you may not have to do this, but uh, this is just something that I noticed that I didn't do very well when I was working with it in Photoshop. So I'm gonna delete just, the, I know, I'm gonna create a, a new line right down the middle of his body that's gonna take off some of the middle of his body because it's not right down the center, both in this view and in the, the back view. So I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. And maybe I'll move this guy up a little bit and this guy over. All right, so to make a, a new um, line that I can cut from, I'm gonna go to edit mesh. I'm sorry, uh, not edit mesh, mesh tools and go to insert edge loop. And I'm gonna click and drag. And you can see that it makes an edge all the way down his body. And this is gonna be pretty tight um, right there. So with that new line drawn, I'm going to say face, and I'm going to delete those faces right along that new edge that I created. Or maybe I can click here, hold down shift, and click on the bottom one. So if I hit four, you can see that it's just selecting the faces that I want to delete. So if I hit six and I say delete, now you can see that's, that's much tighter. Um, it's right on his belly button. I'm going to do the same thing on this. Uh, back image so that when I start modeling it, it's more accurate. So insert edge loop from mesh tools, insert edge loop, I click and I drag, and you can see that goes all the way from the top to the bottom. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the edge, but not not all the way, just you know, a little bit before the edge, not all the way to the edge. Right click and I go to face. I click on, oops, I'm still in the command, so I'm gonna hit un control Z to undo that. Um, I'm going to select the select tool so that I can get out of that command. So I select nothing and now I'm out of that command. So now I can select that top um, 
Let's see if I can just make a marquee around these. If I hit four, yeah, I have them selected. So if I hit six, it's kind of hard to see if they're selected. If I zoom in closer, you can see that they're orange. The selected ones are orange. Um, but working so far away, it's kind of hard to see. So if you hit, if you can't see it very often, if you hit four or even five, well, four is better. With the wireframe mode, you can see what you're selecting a little bit easier. So with those faces selected, I hit delete. And then I go back to object mode and six. So again, you may not need to take that step, but that's just something I needed to do. Another thing you need to do is change the center pivot for each one of these objects that we've created. So if I select this back view and I hit W, you can see the um, center pivot is, is off. Um, I'm gonna hold down the letter D as in dog and V as in Victor, and I'm gonna drag it until it snaps to that new vertex. But I don't want it to uh, pivot from that point. I want it to pivot from the bottom. So I'm gonna hold down D and V again, and I'm gonna drag the green arrow until it snaps to the bottom. Now I'm gonna hold down the letter X and left mouse drag it until it snaps to the, uh, the point of origin again. I'll do the same thing with each one of these. Hold down D and V, snap it to the new vertex, D and V and left mouse drag to the vertex at the bottom. So, and I wanna get in close to make sure that it's actually at the right place. Then I just hold X by itself without D and I snap it to the zero, zero, zero mark. Um, these are, um, so this is the front view and this is the back view. I actually want to flip the back view 180 degrees and you may not have a back view drawn, but if you do, if you did draw your back view, you can do this as well. So rotate Z, I'm gonna rotate around negative 180. And you can see that it's, um, it's not really visible. So I actually need to pull it off of that zero, zero, zero point. So I'm gonna hold down X and snap it to just one unit back and you can see it now. Maybe I'll even, for now, I'll just leave this one there. Um, so then another thing that uh, is a good habit to get into is to clean up your, your history and your, your freezing your transformations. So with this selected, I'm gonna say edit, delete by type history. And I'm also gonna say modify freeze transformations because this is where I want it to, to stay. Um, I may move them around, but if I wanna bring it back, this is it's a default position I want it to bring to go back to. Here's the, um, the back view, edit, delete by type history, and then freeze my transformations, modify freeze transformations, they're all zeros and ones. Um, <clears throat> Another thing I want to do with, with these um, front and the back view, it's not necessary because we're really only going to model half of it. But if you wanted to see the full, you know, if maybe you wanted to work on the left side, you can go to scale X and hit negative one, put a negative in front of the scale X and hit enter. And you can see that flips that. Another thing you can do if you wanted both of them, before you do that, you can hold down control D with your object selected, hit control D and that duplicates it. And with that duplicate, you hit negative one. And now you have both, both sides of the, uh, your character. And again, we, don't, we, we wanna keep these clean. So I'm gonna get rid of that scale negative one, scale X, so modify freeze transformations. And I'll do the same thing with the back. This isn't an absolute necessary step, but if you just wanna see more of your model, you can certainly do this and then modify freeze transformations. Okay, um, this is the side, this is gonna be my left and my right because it's, it's perfectly symmetrical. Um, so you can see that the center pivot is way off. I want it to be right in the, on that vertex at the bottom of his foot. So I'm gonna hold down D and V. I wanna go to that, blue, uh, that yellow circle in the middle and drag that left mouse drag it to that vertex and rotate this 90 degrees in the rotate Z and drag it in. I'm gonna hold down X so it snaps to the grid 
Maybe I'll put him one off. And I'm going to, again, modify or edit, delete by type history, and then modify freeze transformations. So that'll be the, the left view. So to look at the right view, I'm going to duplicate this and hold down X so it snaps to the other side. And it's still black, so I just need to flip that in the scale X, negative 1. Now we see both of them. And I'll freeze. Now this translate X is a little off. It should be a really clean, it should be a whole number, not uh, these strange values. So if I hit four, I just want to make sure that I'm at the right position. Hold down X and I'm dragging it. It looks like it's good. So I'll just freeze transformations and that'll clean up. Six, uh, let's see. Modify freeze transformations. I didn't delete by type history because there's no history there. Um, the last one is the, the top view. And again, you may not even have a top view. That's not required, uh, but I built one, so I might as well use it. Um, I'm gonna change the center pivot to right between the shoulder blades. So control D, I'm sorry, just hold down D and V at the same time. Oops, I did that wrong. I'm gonna do that again. Hold down D and V and drag from the middle. There you go. And it's going to snap right between his shoulders. And you can see that this still does have um, history. So I'm going to get it, delete by type history, rotate it 90 degrees in the X. So that's negative 90, rotate X. And I'm going to drag this guy down until maybe I'll even use my holding down X, I can snap it to the grid. Uh, I need to pull them back. You can see that the faces don't line up. So holding down X and drag it in this view as well. And it may not perfectly line up to the grid. Um, so if you, if you want to adjust it without the grid, that's fine. It's not absolutely necessary that it line up with the grid. I just find it convenient to, uh, to use the grid. So you can start to see my, my character taking shape even before I've um, started modeling. So one last thing, just freeze my transformations on the that last piece. Actually, that's not the last thing. The last thing I wanna do is um, take all these, these images that I'm using to reference and I'm gonna put them on a layer. So I go to the layers and I use create a new layer and assign selected object. So I have all of them selected. I hit this button and you can see that they're all on that layer. So I'm going to leave them restricted so that when I'm modeling, I don't accidentally select these guys or it's not, it's um, references what the R stands for, but I'm also going to rename this because I'm going to create some layers and I'll call this um, ref image underscore LYR for layer or maybe ref images maybe i'll put it s because there's multiple images and if you wanted to you could certainly create a reference image for the top for the side for the front for the back um, whatever you need i just i'm just going to put them all on one layer for now so that that's the end of the first video so the next video i'm going to actually start bringing in um, primitive shapes to create these forms